So it's day one of the reading rush. It is a half nine. I've only got a couple of minutes to vlog because me and my friend Daisy are actually going out in a minute. We're going on a spontaneous trip to Ham House um, in southwest London. It's like this big National Trust property. Um, the house itself is still closed, but we're going to the gardens. We're mainly going so Daisy can take some photos. She's this great travel blogger and travel like Instagram. But I also kind of have a photography mission for today. Um, so the Reading Rush has like a series of official Instagram challenges. I've already planned out most of my Instagrams for this month. I'm doing a challenge um, where for the whole of July I post every day and I try and like work in um, lots of different prompts from lots of different bookstagram challenges. But today I'm doing the um, reading rush prompt which is to recreate a book cover. So I am taking these two books with me. These are two Kate Morton books. These are her first two and by far my favourites. And I'm going to see if I can take any photos of uh, the grounds and the gardens that even look kind of similar um, to try and fulfill that prompt. I'm not actually taking uh, my current read with me, which is the Calvin and Hobbes book. I read like 30, 40 pages of this this morning, um, but it's not really a book that you can like binge. Um, it's a lot of short comic strips, so it works best if you sort of dip in and out over a long period of time. Um, so my original plan was to try and read that all today and try and just like tick one book off on day one. But I'm now thinking that I might try and spread it out a bit over the week, maybe even take all seven days to, to read this book. It is so fun. I've absolutely forgotten how much I love Calvin Hobbes and how hilarious he is. But Daisy is coming to put me up in about five minutes actually, so I need to get going. Talk us through your packed lunch, Daisy. I've got, I'm quite excited to use my stasher bag. This bread, the obligatory packet of crisps, and a little selection of uh, fruit and vegetables, and some hummus. Love it. Anything else? Yes, of course. <laughs> For you and I, I bought us one each. One. Or well, maybe I bought one for us to share. <laughs> nope. One each. Two. Love it. So I have bought a cheese and pickle bagel in there. Nice. I also bought a packet of crisps from theirs. And for us to share <gasps> caramel wafers. Ooh, yummy. And then inside the Pringles can, we have Pringles. We also have a packet of cake. <gasps> Genius. Excellent. I didn't read much more when I was back, but me and my sister did do some synchronised cat snuggling. Such a king. He's here to guard you. Yes. Good angle for you, mate. What's not going wrong? Fucking model. <laughs> He's joking. Look at those eyes. They look like human eyes. Damn. Give it to him. Oh my god. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> The second morning of the reading rush I spent doing boring things. Oh, oi. Chores, yoga, washing my hair, and editing my summer wrap-up video. But I did have a nice fluffy visitor. This is Tumnus, and despite his floofiness, he is normally much less snuggly than his black and white brother Bingley. 
because today was going to be kind of boring otherwise, I thought I would do one of the Reading Rush vlog challenges and tell you one of my favourite reading stories. I, much like most other British readers, I imagine, was a huge fan of Jacqueline Wilson when I was younger, and though I remember lots of her stories really well, like The Lottie Project, Best Friends, The Suitcase Kid and Double Act, my favourite was probably her book Sleepovers. When I was about six or seven, I was obsessed with this book. The premise is simple. There's a group of five friends, Amy, Bella, Chloe, Daisy and Emily, and they take it in turns to host a sleepover for all of the others. I love this book so much, I used tracing paper to copy some of my favourite illustrations of each of the girls onto a separate sheet. I copied out sentences from the book as captions and stuck them all on my wall, including a final sheet which was for all the girls combined. I still have that one, plus the ones for Amy, Chloe and Daisy, and I'm so glad I managed to keep even a few because I think these are so adorable, and I'm very proud of my seven-year-old self for making them. The only reading I got done was in the evening when I read a little bit more Cameron and Hobbes and the first 20 or so pages of Red Thread. I decided last minute again to take part in one of the Reading Rush Instagram challenges, which was to take a photo of a pet with your current read. So I spent a little time chasing Tumnus around my parents' bedroom, trying to get him to pose with red thread. I was eventually successful when I trapped him in the corner by the door and got the shots I needed. Luckily, he immediately forgave me for trapping him and decided to come up to my bedroom and jump out my window. Don't do it! This is not a smart move, sir. Come down. Come in this way. I'm trying to do that. After pissing around for a bit, he did come back in. He is. Oh, he's a seamy boy. Let me see you. Okay, reading update as of about two o'clock this afternoon. I am about 150 pages into the Cameron and Hobbes book. It's still really fun, um, it's still hilarious. It's bringing back all these memories of when I first read this book, like, I don't know, 15 years ago or something. It also turns out quite a lot of uh, the punchlines in here are jokes in my family that we like quote to each other quite a lot and I completely forgotten they came from this book. As for my second read, Red Thread, I think I'm about 30 pages into this now. It's a bit of a weird one, because when I started reading it last night, I really wasn't in the mood for it. I didn't like it. I kept thinking like, oh, this is so pointless. Where's this going? I thought this was going to be about mazes and labyrinths, and it's just like the author's stream of consciousness. But then this morning, I was kind of really into it. So I think it's going to be another one that I have to like dip in and out of, like the Calvin and Hobbes book throughout the week. Though I'm gonna have to make like much more of an effort to force myself to read it because honestly I read like 10 pages this morning and my brain was like okay that's enough content of that for one day like I'm saturated with maze and labyrinth related things so it might be a struggle to finish this by the end of the week. So in a minute me and my sister are going down the road to our local park to do some reading there. I'm actually not going to bring um, the book I put on my TBR for this, which I wanted to read entirely outdoors. I'm actually going to bring the other one, The Guest List. This is one that my sister actually really wants me to read so that she can read it as soon as I'm done. So I'm kind of appeasing her by bumping this up my TBR. I've heard a lot of people talking about this and saying it's really amazing. So I'm hoping it turns out to be that way. I hope it's not disappointing. But yeah, basically I'm going to be very soon in the middle of three books and having finished none of them. So I'm not really quite sure what's come over me at the moment, but I'm hoping it works and I don't end up like being too confused from all the books I'm reading at once. Okay, show me what you're reading. All right, so because actually doesn't have a dust jacket, so I keep in suspense for a little bit longer. But it's I'm not your baby mother by yeah. Candice Braithwaite, and I'm oh I don't know how far I am. Fifty four pages. Started this yesterday, so carry it on. Solid. Best fart you ever did. 
Um, good question. I feel like I feel like it's yet to happen. Oh wow. Do you know what? I really I'm feel like <laughs> like, up to it. I feel like Chris Kardashian. <laughs> You're <laughs> doing amazing, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> So update on the guest list, I'm about a third of the way through, uh, I am liking it so far, it's not amazing, um, but I can tell it has potential and I can already see like some of the secrets that characters are alluding to, like occasionally they'll make a, a little reference towards something mysteriously and I'm like right well that's a secret, that's gonna come out later in the book for sure. The characters are all really, really dislikable. Um, all of the relationships are at least slightly dysfunctional. So that, it, it does make it a little bit frustrating to read sometimes because some of them are like so nasty. There's a group of um, like the groomsmen, I guess you would say in the wedding, like they all went to like, the same boarding school together and they are like such dicks, they're such assholes. And I don't understand um, why they're friends with each other and why anyone is friends with them and even like puts up with their presence if I was having a conversation with these guys and they were behaving like they are in the book I would just walk away and be like no you're not in my life I'm not interested in having a conversation with you you talking to me like this but I am still finding it quite compelling so I think it's gonna turn out quite well um, I haven't read a like thriller mystery book in I think a couple months so I am really liking I guess revisiting the genre that I don't reach for very often, um, which is like why I chose this book for my TBR. This was the genre I, I wanted to try more of that I didn't read enough of. After starting this in the park yesterday, I thought maybe I would like switch this in for the book I read entirely out of the house. And then just now I was like, actually, I, I do really want to read that um, just inside. So I guess I could like bend the rule for that challenge a bit and be like, I started reading it outside. So I'm counting it for that one because the organizers for the readathon did say like, you can be a bit creative and like interpret the rules and bend them a little bit if you need to for that challenge. And I guess I could also use it for the title starting with the, because it's the guest list. I keep calling this the guest house. I don't know why my brain's getting really confused there. But yeah, I'm gonna try and read as much as, as I can. Um, and then this evening I have my next book club meeting with my friends. So I forgot that we're not having book club this evening, it's at half four. So I have an hour to prep my bookstagram for this evening, um, get everything ready, edit it, get the hashtags and stuff, and also finish uploading and doing the captions for um, my new video, which is my summer wrap up part one, which will be out by the time you're watching this video. So please go and give it a look. And then I'll be ready to go to book club. I just need to remember what book it was we actually read, so I might actually need to rewatch this wrap up because I do talk about the book in it. I remember liking it, but not any of the specifics. So hopefully the other three people there will be able to contribute more to the conversation than I will. Um, another update is I doubt I'll be able to get any reading done tomorrow because Taylor Swift has just casually announced that she's releasing her new album at midnight. I don't know what to do with this information, I did just go and scream to my sister about it. It's called Folklore in lowercase letters. I mean, first of all, how dare she do this to me? I just, just don't know what I'm gonna do with myself tomorrow, basically. to go to bed and this is my final update for day four 
Book Club was really fun. We talked about our last read, which was uh, The Dark Side of the Mind by Kerry Danes. And Daisy picked our new book club pick, which is, oh god, what's it called? The Woman in White um, by some guy. It is not only a classic, but like a almost 700 page classic. So that does not bode well for me liking it, um, but because it's so old, I can get like a free ebook of it because of like copyright. So that's something. As for the guest list, I'm like really far into it. I reckon I've only got like 20% left. Um, it's gotten better. I said before, like it's nothing special. Like now I'm starting to like see all the pieces come together and we're finding out some of the mysteries. There was like one particularly good reveal, I would say, which like I genuinely did not see coming. And I was like, ooh, very nice. And I actually really want to finish it now, but it's late and I'm sleepy. So I'm going to try and finish that tomorrow and that will be the first book I've actually finished on this readathon. And also tomorrow I have Taylor Swift's new album to listen to. Like I can't quite believe that's a thing that's happening. I think that might just like completely derail me for the last three days of this if I get too obsessed with a new album. So hopefully that will be good and I can finish the guest list tomorrow and hopefully also the Carolyn and Hobbs book. I finished it. Uh, I stayed up late to finish it. And it was good. So I ended up staying up late yesterday to finish the guest list and I did like it. I think I'm going to give it three stars because it was good but it never reached like really good level for me. I take back what I said about all of the characters being unlikable. There were at least two characters I can think of that I did actually like in the end. And I'm quite glad that the character who got murdered got murdered because like I hated them so much by the end of it. The book did a really good job of giving like almost everyone motives to want to have this person die. <laughs> but I think my biggest criticism would be like the pacing. I actually did a really good job of like building and building and building consistently until the end. I feel like a lot of thrillers, um, the tension builds while the mystery is still there and then when you find out the answer it all sort of like fizzles out for the very end of the book. This one it did do a really good job at building and building and building right till the very end because you don't actually find out like who gets murdered until 95% of the way through and then you find out who the murderer is like 98% of the way through. So like the tension all came to a head right at the end of the book but then it ended really quickly after that and I kind of wish we'd had more like the high tension scenes or something like that. It did feel like it ended too abruptly and I was kind of wishing like oh, I wish there was like 10, 15, maybe 20 more pages to see more of the fallout and what happened to some of the characters at, at the end because a lot of them did just seem to like vanish and I was thinking afterwards like oh what happened to what happened to so and so what happened to that guy and we never actually find out but I have finally finished finally finished a book this readathon I'm gonna count this for a book which starts with the and I'm also gonna count it for um, a genre I wanted to read more of and you know what I'm also gonna count it for reading a book outside because I'm, I read most of this inside but I read like the, the beginning the most important bit I read that in the park outside as for the other books, I'm still working my way through the Cameron Hobbs. Very funny, loving how that's going. And as for Red Thread, I just, this is not a good book to pick for a readathon TBR. Like I really should have learnt my lesson. I wanted to read this in April when the magical readathon was running throughout the entirety of April and I didn't read it. So if I couldn't read it in a month long readathon, why or why did I put it on my TBR for a week long readathon? It's just a book that needs so much like brain power and dedication to read. And I'm here like, loving the the sort of quick fast-paced murder mystery I just read and wanting to read something more like that so I think I might just officially give up on Red Thread and try and replace it with something else sneak in remix my TBR a bit to try and fit the challenges as much as possible and also the other book I put on my TBR The Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage I'm now thinking I don't really want to read this one either because it's a graphic novel so I thought it'd be quick but it just has so much text and writing I think it's going to be a lot of intense history which I'm really not not in the mood for, I'm afraid. Other updates are I'm being eaten alive by midges or something in my room. It's not a mosquito, it's not leaving mosquito bites on me, they're smaller and there's a lot more of them. I've literally been bitten like 30 to 40 times since Monday, since I went to Ham House with Daisy. I think that cursed me or something because I just don't know where they're coming from. I can't find them in my room. I sleep with my window shut so I'm not getting in during the night but I wake up with like 10 more bites on me. It's so annoying. 
And my final update is that I have started listening to the new Taylor Swift album and I'm going to listen to some more of it later, I think. And I'm going to have to think of what I want to read next. If I'm just abandoning my TBR, I'm going to have to give that some thought. So I think I might read some more of the Callan Hobbs book until inspiration strikes and I could pick a new actual novel to read. This was another not very exciting day, so to fill some time I'm going to tell another of my favourite reading stories. Okay, this is maybe not a favourite reading story because it's actually about one of the most miserable times in my life and it isn't even entirely a story about reading, but oh well. In autumn 2016 I started my year abroad studying at the University of Augsburg in Germany. It was immediately and obviously a bust and I have a lot of stories I could tell about how much I hated it there. But for the first month I lived there, the house didn't have any Wi-Fi. I ended up spending all of my time when I wasn't crying on public transport, reading. These are just a few of the books I read within a couple of weeks of my arrival. To keep from completely losing my mind, I would also get the bus into the centre of town every now and then, and sit in a cafe on the main town square called Dean and David. This was not a good cafe, the only reason I kept going back was because I was using their Wi-Fi to download TV shows that I'd later watch back in the house. It was also in these first few months in Augsburg that I really got into Bookstagram. I'd started my account back in July, but then realised it was a really fun hobby and a very welcome distraction, and it kept me busy trying to take creative photos of the 12 or so books I'd brought with me. I guess there's not really a clear ending to the story because eventually we got Wi-Fi, I went back to reading my normal amount, I ended up moving closer to the town centre a few months later, and eventually I gave up and ended my year abroad early because I hate it all so much. But it was the beginning of my love affair with Bookstagram, so I guess I can thank Augsburg for being so miserable it gave me an excuse to spend more time on my phone. Guys, I've had an epiphany. So. Red Thread was going to fill the prompt to read a book that inspired a film you've already seen and that was me kind of pushing it and being creative with the interpretation of that challenge but my sister was just talking to me about how she wants to read an Agatha Christie book next because she's kind of given up on her current read as well and then she was like joking like oh yeah that's a challenge I'll probably be able to do and I was like wait why am I why am I binding myself to my own TBR like I could just borrow an Agatha Christie book off her like read a Poirot read a Marple or something and then I could just easily fulfill that challenge without having to think about it. And I'm under the impression that quite a lot of those books are green, which would mean I would actually fulfill the first challenge to read a book the same colour as my birthstone, the nasty green one. And if this works, if I'm successful in picking a book, then I could actually hit all of the challenges. Hello. I'm so ready. Right. So what ones, what green ones? So it's Pearl and House. I don't know if I've passed any of these, you know. Uh, and then I'll give you, and then there were none. And then those as are well. Are there any green ones? Oh, There's no. a couple. And also the fronts are all different. So like... At least one of those is going to be green. Yeah, there'll definitely be a green one. So I mean, these are all not green ones that I'm pulling out, but... <laughs> that one's green. That one's hey. terrible, though. The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding. I read it oh, Christmas that sounds bad. it sounded funny, but it really was bad. Okay, let's just pull Should out all pull the green out. ones. I'm not going to be that satisfying because we're not going to get a full square because oh. it's going to be 11, but I'll just go like that. Well, that's nice. <laughs> technically, Peridot or Peridot, but I'm going to go with Peridot and House. And look, it's the first one I'm touching. Oh my goodness, what wow. a coincidence. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. day six of the reading rush and I'm just gonna do like one big clip for today because I actually want to get back to reading in a minute. So I have finished the Cowan and Hobbs book. Uh, I finished it this morning, only had like 30 or so pages to read and it's great. I've given it five stars because it's like just a classic and if you have never read any of the Cowan and Hobbs books like I would really recommend reading them but I gave that one five stars and my current read is the Agatha Christie book I picked out yesterday. This is a Poirot adventure called Peril at End House and I picked it because I thought it was going to be a new story and um, I've seen quite a few episodes of the TV show mostly like the the newer ones because they tend to be a bit better but unfortunately um immediately upon starting this one I remembered that I have seen the episode that this is based on um and it's like one of the really good ones <laughs> so I remember exactly what the mystery is who gets killed who the murderer is how Poirot discovers this so actually that kind of works out perfectly because I can definitely then count this for the challenge to read a book that has inspired a film we've already seen. So I decided to continue with it anyway and I am actually halfway through so I reckon 
I could finish this today if I like really put my head down, which I'm planning on doing later. And I thought while I was here, I would do the, um, what's it called? The racing to read tag, which was one of the um, like vlog challenge, video challenge things. Um, the Reading Rush has this year. I've given the questions a quick look over and picked out some books uh, from my shelves that I think will fit. So the first question is, warm up, a book that stretches your mind. And my answer is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I read this five years ago and it was like one of my favourite books um, of 2015. I still think about it all the time and it's long overdue a reread. It's quite confusing and clever and requires quite a lot of concentration to understand. The whole point is that there's this guy called Harry August and he's born in I think 1918, he lives his life and he dies. And then he's born again in 1918 and by the time he's like three or four or something like his memories have returned to him of his first life and then he keeps living and dying except he can change um, like what he does during his life and like make different decisions and go down different career paths and do completely different things. But it was just really really clever, I really loved it. Um, and I would say it definitely stretches the mind. The second prompt is start line. What's a book you started but never finished? This one is um, quite easy for me to pick. I'm going to talk about The Clockwork Orange or A Clockwork Orange by whoever it's by. Um, I had to read this in school, I think in year 12, because we did our coursework on dystopian literature. But I hated A Clockwork Orange so much that I never finished it. And I actually wrote my essay on it having never finished the book. I thought it did really well actually. And to this day it is like the worst book I've ever read. I hate that book more than anything I've ever read. So that is my answer for that question. The third one is Sprint, a book you read really quickly. So for this one I'm going with Bloodlust and Bonnets by Emily McGovern. This is so hilarious. Um, I would describe it as an irreverent Regency romp. It really doesn't take itself too seriously. It's very fun. The cartoon style is like quite simple but funny and it's just kind of like a ridiculous read um, where it sort of undermines lots of tropes of like Jane Austen books um, and I'm, I remember there being vampires and like sword fights and like a sort of weird forest spirit at one point. The next prompt is Marathon, your favourite long book. For this one I'm going with The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. I've mentioned this a few times in this vlog already. This is either her first or second book, I genuinely can't remember. Those are like the two best ones. And it is a historical fiction novel um, about an Australian woman in the present day who comes to England to investigate her grandmother's origins. And then it's also um, flashing back to uh, like a family in the Victorian era and obviously like these two storylines are connected. And it's just a very very good book and it is 645 pages and on the last page there is like a massive tea stain from where I think I spilled tea on it. The next question is, Hurdles, what's a book that had ups and downs? This one, I genuinely sat at my bookshelves for quite a long time trying to pick an answer. It was too hard, so I'm kind of cheating and I'm going with a full series that I would say had ups and downs. This is the Lunar Chronicles series by, is it by Marissa Meyer. This is really big on booktube um, when I started watching in like 2014, 2015. There are four books. The first one is Cinder, I really liked. I think I get that one five stars. Second one, Scarlet, didn't really like. I hate Scarlet as a character and I hated everything that she was doing and everyone she was talking to. So that one got two stars. And the third one was Cress, which I think is quite a lot of people's favourite book. This was a step up because it had less Scarlet in. And then the fourth book, Winter, got another five stars from me. So like, it really like peaked and then went down and then came up again at the end. So I think that counts as having ups and downs. The next one is Finish Line, a book you are proud to finish. So I'm going to go with The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch. I read this in April for the uh, Magical Readathon after having owned it for like three or four years because I was so intimidated by it, um, but I finally finished it, so I'm very proud of that. Next question is, gold medal, the best book you've read during a readathon? To be honest, I could say The Lies of Locke More for this one, or I could actually say The Count Hoss book I just finished, because I'm giving that one five stars. But instead, I'm gonna say Every Heart Doorway by Shauna Maguire, which I also read during the Magical Readathon in April. I just remember thinking this was like so clever, and it's really short, it's like a novella, and I was so impressed that it managed to be so good, and pack so much into so few pages. And the last question is Participation Ribbon, an underrated book you wish got more attention. I'm gonna say the best book I've read so far this year, Sissy by Jacob Tobiah. This is a coming of gender memoir um, by a non-binary author and it's just like by far the best thing I've read in years. 
and it's just amazing it'll make you happy it'll make you sad it'll make you laugh it'll make you cry it's so like brave and honest and true and just an amazing amazing read and it's so so well written i really cannot recommend this highly enough so yeah that is my attempt at the racing to read book tag and now I'm going to get back on to reading uh, Peril at End House and see, fingers crossed, um, if I can finish it today. Who's your mother in the back, son? Remember also he thought so he ate a different son than he had spite. Day seven of the reading rush and I'm on my last read still. This is what Peril of End House looks like um, under the dust jacket. I am so close to the end. I think I've got like 70 or so pages left. It's okay. I mean, it's not a new favourite. But the interesting thing is I'm wondering whether me knowing the story already and knowing the ending is like making it more or less enjoyable for me. Because on some levels I'm kind of thinking like, okay, can we wrap this up already? Like I know what's gonna happen. But then also like I think me knowing the story is helping me enjoy it more because I don't tend to like older books and like more old-fashioned writing styles. But me knowing the story is helping me stay more engaged and pay attention anyway. So it's kind of like a good and bad thing. <laughs> I originally hoped to finish this yesterday, um, but in the evening, instead of reading, me and my family actually watched an episode of the Poirot TV series. But I also wanted to take this time to give my, I don't know, like formal first thoughts on the new Taylor Swift album. Unfortunately, if you're someone who really loved it, what I'm about to say will probably not make you very happy because I kind of found it a bit disappointing. And the best way I think I can articulate this is to say that when I first listened to the album, there were only like a couple songs where after I finished listening to them, I thought, oh, I'd like to listen to that again in the future. For most of them, like, it didn't even cross my mind. It was kind of like, oh, that was a song. So I'm going to get the track list on Wikipedia and give you a quick lowdown of my thoughts. So the first three songs, um, The One, Cardigan and The Last Great American Dynasty, I liked them all, thought they were solid but nothing special. Cardigan was my favourite of those three um, and as of now it's my second favourite overall on the album. But unfortunately after those three we had Exile. Honestly I think that's one of the worst songs she's ever done, just being honest. It's really not my thing. I thought it was very boring and simple. It felt kind of like they were singing the same like three notes over and over again. I really didn't like that one. I think that one could have been like completely replaced by song number five, My Tears Ricochet, and that could have been like the sad song at the beginning of the album. But again, that one really didn't feel very special to me and neither did number six, Mirable. I finished that and I was like, well, that is the most forgettable song I've ever heard, I'm sorry. Song seven, also called Seven, was a step up for me. I liked it because it sounded a bit like creepy folk music and that was the vibe I was into. And then the eighth song, August, is my favorite on the album. I was really hoping I would like that one because my birthday is in August and so I was kind of biased towards liking it but then it did deliver and that is, yeah, my favorite one. Song number nine is This Is Me Trying. Again, kind of forgetful on the same level as Mirable for me, like neither of those I really feel the urge to listen to again. Number 10, Illicit Affairs, and number 12, Invisible String, were like a bit of a step up. I liked them, wouldn't mind listening to them again, but probably wouldn't like seek them out on purpose. The next song, Mad Woman, I like, I read the title and I was imagining such a different song than it turned out to be. It turned out okay, but again, like, nothing special. The next song, Epiphany, I've seen lots of people say it's their favourite. I get that. I don't particularly like it, but also it's too sad for me to listen to. I felt the same way about um, Soon You'll Get Better from Lover. Like it's an okay song and I can appreciate that, but I don't listen to it because it's too sad. Song number 14 is Betty. That was okay, but again, wouldn't seek it out. Song number 15, Peace, was my second least favourite on the album. It's just like the style I don't really like. It kind of reminded me of False God where it's kind of like the singing doesn't quite match up to the rhythm and I get people like that but I really don't because I find it very hard to like know where we are in the song and like understand where to sing. So I liked the lyrics. I like the lyrics of all the album to be honest but I think it was more like the melodies that let me down. And the last song, Hoax, at that point like all the songs were kind of bleeding together because I didn't find any of them that special so at that point my brain was kind of tapped out and I don't really have an opinion on that song. But what I will say is that quite a lot of Taylor Swift songs, which are now my favourites, were ones which I did not originally like. Songs like uh, Clean, Call It What You Want, uh, Daylight and This Love, I really didn't like them at first and now they're like solid Taylor Swift songs for me. 
So I'm just really hoping that this album is a grower and the more I listen to it, the more the songs I kind of viewed as mediocre at the beginning will start to stand up to me more. But that is just my opinion. I am still a big Taylor Swift fan. And yeah, if nothing else changes, I still have August and Cardigan that I really like from that album. I carried on reading and was so close to finishing the book when I spontaneously decided to take part in the very last photo challenge of the reading rush, which was to make an artwork out of your books. I decided to use mine to make a huge rainbow flat lay and I was completely inspired by other people who'd already posted their photos and had made rainbows of some kind using their books. So I thought this would be a quick and easy idea for me. It actually ended up taking ages and was quite difficult, but I was very pleased with the outcome. I have changed my top for this final clip, you will see why in a second. So I did finish Parallel End House, so I'm going to very quickly run through the three books I finished this readathon and what challenges I'm counting them each for. So obviously we have Parallel End House by Agatha Christie, the book I just finished. I'm giving this one three stars, I would say it is a solid murder mystery story and I really like the twist at the end even though like I knew it was coming because I've already seen the TV episode that's based on this book. So the challenges I'm counting this for are to read a book that's inspired a film, or in this case TV series, that I've already seen. And I'm also counting it for the challenge to read a book that has the same colour as your birthstone. This is like technically not the same colour as my birthstone, but it's green and my birthstone is green, so I'm counting it for both of those. Then we had The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I also gave this one three stars, another solid murder mystery. So I'm counting this for the challenges of read a book outside your house, read a book in a genre that you don't read enough of or you want to read more of, and also the first book I touched, although I could also count Peril End House for that challenge, seeing as that's how I picked it out. And finally we have my favourite book of the readathon, The Authoritative Calvin and Hobbes, which I read for the challenges of read a book starting with the and read a book on a different continent to where you are. And this book is also the reason I'm wearing this top because even though you can't really see it on this front cover, you can see it more on this Calvin Hobbes book. Calvin has a black and red stripy top, so that is what I am wearing. And so that was one of the readathon vlog challenges to match your outfit with a book. So overall I've had a really fun time this week. I did manage to read three books even though only two of them were on my official TBR. I read a total of 890 pages I believe and my average rating for those three books was 3.6 stars. So I had no duds or misfires. I guess maybe for the books I gave up on but I'm not counting them as duds because I do plan to read them in the future. So those were firstly The Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage. I didn't even try and read this one, it's going to go straight back on my TBR shelf for another day. And also Red Thread by Charlotte Higgins. I do still want to read this one, it's just not made to be read during a readathon I think. This is the kind of book that demands to be savoured intellectually. I only read the very very beginning of this but there were still like five quotes I wanted to pull out because it was really beautifully written, if maybe a little bit too intense and dense for a readathon. So yeah, that's everything I've read and done this week. Just trying to think if there's anything I've forgotten to follow up on. Uh, I guess I got some bug spray to stop whatever's been biting me and it seems to be doing well. So I hope you had a great time this week as well if you were taking part in the reading rush and if you weren't I hope you had a great time anyway. I hope if you are a Taylor Swift fan you like the album a little bit more than I did. I'm now gonna go and make myself a cup of tea I think um, which is the final vlog challenge for the reading rush. So I'll leave you with a little montage of me doing that and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!